All right, hello and welcome to this episode where we're gonna talk about what to do when you're having a lot of symptoms going on. And so whether that's a racing thoughts or a lot of emotion, and I kinda wanna talk through you know, really some, some anchor points to make sure you know what to do, and more importantly, what not to do. So before we dive in, um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the founder of Restored Minds. Um, if you're looking for help and support on your journey to recovery, I have some links down in the notes or you can head over to RestoredMinds.com. Also, this month, I'm going to be doing a live workshop um, in, in lieu of uh, OCD Awareness Week. So uh, it's going to be happening, uh, I believe, on October 14th. There's the link in the notes. Um, you can also head over to the site where we'll have a, a little link as well um, where you can register. Again, it's free. Um, so if you are looking to... Uh, to really get some, um, you know, potentially even live Q&A with me as well as a, a more in-depth training. Um, definitely check that out and register as soon as you can because uh, we probably will have a limited amount of spots that we're able to offer because we're going to be doing it on Zoom. So uh, make sure to claim your seat as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, what do I do when I have a bunch of symptoms going on? Well, so if you're having uh, a lot of symptoms, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, again, you're doing bad or that this is a bad thing or that you are um, doing something wrong, right? Sometimes, you know, symptomology will just come to the surface and that can, you know, that might mean the moment you wake up, you all of a sudden have, again, racing mind. It might mean that you wake up in the middle of the night with panic sensations. It might mean you're just experiencing anxiety throughout the day. The key is, is to really understand it is we're not trying to solve the perceived problem, we're trying to solve the loop, right? We don't want the loop to form. And if it is forming, we want to break it. And the way we do that is by making sure that we're not engaging in any behaviors that are reinforcing it. And we're not resisting the thoughts or the feelings because the resistance to them is what leads us to the behaviors itself. So when we talk about what to do with thought, the key is, is to first to, to detach yourself, meaning to move to a state of consciousness, meaning I'm the one that's observing the mind and to be able to watch the mind, right? And really, you know, again, let the mind just go as wild as it needs to go sometimes. You know, sometimes it's kind of like a, a horse that needs to be tamed. It's like you got to just open the gate and let it run, you know, as fast as it needs to run and not attempt to control or to manipulate or to you know, diminish the symptoms because our attempt to control, manipulate and diminish always le is all rooted in resistance, all with the belief that we shouldn't be experiencing this. This is bad. This isn't supposed to be happening. And that leads us to then doing compulsion. So whether it's avoidance, suppression, reassurance, um, medicating, right. Uh, you know, neutralizing all that stuff. So if we, we really need to understand that we don't want to focus on the symptom as the problem. We want to understand that our resistance to it is often the main thing that we're really looking to make sure we, we have in control. Um, so the thoughts themselves, we really want to create an open environment uh, for the mind and let the mind go as wild as it needs to go. Uh, you, you really, you are not going to win if you try to fight the mind. If the mind's racing really fast and you're trying to stop each thought or you're trying to squash thoughts or you're playing whack-a-mole with them, trying to get rid of them, uh, you, you know, you're, it's not going to go well. I'm going to be transparent. And so we actually instead want to create an environment where we say, hey, you know, like mind, you know, go as fast as you need to go. Go as wild as you need to go, right? Cre from an observing standpoint, again, it doesn't mean that we agree with whatever the mind is saying. We're not, we're not entertaining the content of the mind we're creating a space for the mind to literally just go wild and same thing with the body we actually want to become conscious of what's going on in the body and really become as non-resistant as we can to that specific experience and this is really the whole concept of letting go and and really bringing consciousness to what is exactly as it is and in a non-resistant state, actually allowing that experience to run its course. See, the, the main issue we have when symptoms go wild or really increase is that we immediately appraise it and assume that it's bad. And when we make that, that first appraisal, that first judgment, that's the, that's the first place that we go wrong. Because if we operate under the assumption it's bad, then it makes sense that we should then try to remove it or get rid of it or whatever. And, and that's, that's where everyone goes wrong with OCD and anxiety, to be honest, 
is the initial appraisal that the symptomology is a disorder or bad because then we are always resisting the symptomology and then we are going to continuously gauge engage in compulsions and that's paradoxically going to keep us in the loop and keep us trapped so that's why the initial appraisal of saying that this is bad it's like well you don't know it's bad it may be uncomfortable but if you have a bunch of emotion in your system that needs to come up and release well by it coming to the surface it gives it the potentiality and the opportunity for it to release so if if this is coming up it's important not to assume that it's bad and just in and fall into the level of pride and thinking that you know for a fact this is bad you know for a fact you're not supposed to be experiencing this right now as opposed to moving into a certain trustingness of like okay like my, this is something my body needs to do it knows what it's doing it knows how to regulate it knows how to release this and moving more into a an observing neutral state towards the experience because when you do that there there is this you know, process where your body actually knows how to process emotions. It knows that the mind knows how to calm down. But if you've built up a ton of pressure by resisting and suppressing and avoiding and, you know, distracting yourself and maintain and never taking care of yourself emotionally, essentially, uh, it's, it, it's going to create a lot of pressure in the system. And sometimes that symptomology is going to come up. And so if you're not doing any compulsions and you're certain that that's not happening, then there's nothing else you really need to do. What you don't want to do is start going into, okay, I'm going to squash all these thoughts or I'm going to, you know, again, put things in my system to immediately calm myself down. Anything that's going to create an immediate shift in your system is is probably something you want to, you know, essentially stay away from just because it's it's reinforcing the idea that these experiences when it comes to, you know, again, anxiety and intrusive thoughts or racing mind, these experiences are bad. And what happens is if you suppress it, it's just going to keep coming up. So by maintaining a state of consciousness, being the observer and allowing these experiences to transpire and run their course is the best long-term approach for you. And so if the systems are very intense that day, realize that you have a lot of opportunity to release a lot of stuff potentially and actually see it as an opportunity as opposed to this this terrible experience that is happening to you right so how you choose to perceive something uh, is is very important for your success on this journey because if you choose to perceive it in a way that villainizes the symptoms or puts you in a victim mindset that is going to perpetually keep you stuck so with that, again, I, was ho I hope that was helpful. Again, please join me on the live uh, um, seminar that I'm going to be doing this month. Uh, so the link's down in the notes, or you can head over to restoredminds.com. Uh, we'll have something on the homepage shortly uh, where you can sign up and register. Again, it's going to be free. Um, it is going to be limited spots, so claim your spot. And again, it is just going to be live. I don't think I'm going to be putting out a recording of it. So if you want to join, make sure to grab your spot and, uh, and please show up on time as well. So... Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon and have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Hey there. So if you enjoyed that video, we've linked up a few more videos that we think you'd find helpful as well. And if you have found this helpful, we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing. And if you're looking for help and guidance, please check out restoredminds.com as we have several options for you to get started. See you guys soon.